welcome to episode 21 of Building My First Model Railway and part two of Making My Industrial Area. So in this episode, I finally get to actually make some buildings. Uh, I do some of the foundation area as well, so uh, and some of the scenic. So really getting into actually making the industrial area come to life as I sort of envisaged and, and planned it. Um, quite a few late nights um, doing some of the, uh, doing the gas holder and some of the tanks and that. Um, as you'll see later on in the video, um, but it's all coming together. So watch the end, and hopefully you'll you'll see uh, you'll see it starting to look like an actual industrial area. So a lot of fun. Um, made quite a bit of progress. You never make as much progress as you want, in truth. But uh, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with what I've done so far. So hopefully, probably just one more um, uh, one more part to this series, uh, and it should be all be completed. So yeah, hopefully you'll find it enjoyable and uh, might learn a thing or two, although I learn every time I do something new. So, uh, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, let's get into it. So now the track's done, um, I started to think about the fencing and that, and um, I did my first order from Scale Model Scenery and their laser cut kits. So I've um, got a few bits of them. So the first thing I've got is this uh, security fencing. And um, so uh, that's going to go obviously around the, the actual industrial area around the gas works. And um, I also bought some gates for that as well. So I think what I'm going to do is actually have some gates either end of the good sidings, the unloading sidings, so that they're separate from the actual main uh, running line at the back there. So props that in the middle here. And um, then I've also got um, a little uh, barrier. So that can get the access into the compound. Couldn't resist but to buy some little these uh, little gas bottles. I think it's gonna be a gas works or some of it is anyway. And then the other thing I was thinking is um, is to actually do this rail at the back as a bit more undergroundy. So I've got these cable hangers, these tiny little cable hangers, and I'll plan to put them along the back here and then run the cables along it and then also add a third and fourth rail to this outer line just to give it a more of an underground type feel to it even though it's going to be sort of an underground line end and it can be um obviously the run around line for the the goods which obviously you wouldn't have in real life but it needs must on my railway so yeah so i was thinking of putting the third and fourth rail on just to give it that london underground feel to it anyway so yeah so uh, a few bits to get on with and I'll try and film various bits of uh, but various stages of me trying to install them all. I've not used the, the laser cut stuff before, so I've got myself some primer as well, so to paint it all. So it looks a bit fiddly, so it's going to be interesting. But I'll try and capture some film of that uh, as I go along. So putting these cable hangers on was quite a challenge. They're quite small and fiddly, probably smaller than I thought they were going to be, but I expect they are probably typical. But yeah, just trying to get them in position was a challenge. I used a bit of plastic uh, just to hold them and get the right height all the way along the, the pillars. And it was a case of just getting the tweezers, applying the, the glue and then putting them in position. And then a couple of seconds and they would set. So it um, wasn't too bad. I did have trouble getting cable for them. So um, because it's actually they're so small, trying to get a bit of wire to fit in. So I'm still trying to find the right wire to put in afterwards, but uh, at least they're all glued in position now. That's one of my cable hangers now glued up in place. And also I've put in a third and a fourth rail. I don't know how well you can see that in this video. Um, let's go all the way along there. So all I did for that is I took some of this uh, Co 75 flexi track that I had from the auction I won, um, and then paint it in an old rust paint, and then I just glued it directly onto the sleepers. I didn't bother trying to put chairs on because it's really just to give the impression. Um, but I think it looks okay. So, yeah, I just now need to get some uh, thin wire to be cables along the back wall there. I think it says 0.5mm is the thickness. So I need to source some of that and then I can put the cabling on and then I can get on with the uh, industrial area in front. Now that's all pretty much done. So it's now time to move on to doing the fencing 
thought better to get the fencing in position before I do the buildings um, and I know they can fit in exactly where I want them and obviously it's easy to install without the buildings in place. Now I chose these scale scenes um, security fence uh, which is um, I think it's sort of 3D printed and, and that um, took they're really fiddly actually a lot of a lot of cutting out the scalpel um, to get all the pieces and then you then had to glue um, extra support sort of on the front and the back on the on the front side you did the upright and the cross beams so you cut them out individually and then you had to glue them on and then on the back you just glued on the uprights and it gave you the sort of the 3d effect on the actual fencing but again that was really fiddly and quite time consuming to do all of that and uh, and i had quite a bit of fencing i think it was two meters of fencing to do so it took me pretty much the best part of the whole day just cutting it all out and gluing it all in place and then there's a few gates you do with it as well um, but I persevered and got there in the end and then once I'd done that glued it and all dried then it was a case of um, having to spray it all to primer uh, primer at all so I gave it a good coat of primer um, and then once the primer had dried and the primer was quite a good grey base so I didn't bother painting it grey again I just then used weathering uh, powders and, and some weathering paints just to add an extra bit of colour and dirt and grime to the fences um, and then when that was all dry it was then a case of just laying them on the layout where I wanted them drilling in a very small hole for where the uprights are the uprights are slightly longer than you need so that, that allows you to drill a hole and put it into the hole and then glue them in position um, so Again, a bit fiddly and trying to get the space in exact for a whole run of fences of all the uprights uh, was a bit of a challenge, but uh, but again, managed to do it all in the end and I, and I think the, uh, the end result is pretty good. So the key part of the industrial will be my gas holder. So um, I thought it was important that, uh, that that really stands out and, and looks good. Searched around a number of different gas holders, but uh, the best one I thought suited my layout was this uh, Gage Master Ford Hampton gas holder wasn't too big and looked very much like the traditional British gas holders that you, you see or used to see. Uh, putting it together wasn't too bad at all. Uh, the mainly just built the cylinders and then stacked them on top of each other and glued them together. The hardest bit was cutting out all these fiddly little grey pieces which form the supports for the gas holder, um, the gantry, the fencing that goes around it and the ladders and the like. So um, that took quite a while to cut all those little pieces out. A um, bit of a late night, supported by a few glasses of wine, as you, you can see there from the glass in the background. Um, but yeah, weren't too bad, just cracked on with it, knocked them out. Uh, then the next stage was to actually weather them all. I wanted to weather them before I actually uh, glued them in. I thought it'd be easier to do them individually and then glue it all along, because I didn't want to actually obviously, accidentally get paint on the actual tank itself. Um, so that was just a case of, sort of weathering with the, in the normal manner with um, some brushes and a bit of sponge and uh, just weathering them all and then gluing them all together. There's my gas holder pretty much finished now. So you can see I've uh, glued it all together and um, weathered. I weathered the, I didn't catch much video of it unfortunately, but I weathered the tank first before I put the uh, structure around the outside. So I've painted it with this um, this duck egg to represent the gas hole that's near me. So duck egg glue, which is a I put some primer on it and then paint that on it, and then weathered that as well, just with some weathering powders and um, some just some track weathering paints as well. Um, and then I did the same with all the actual supports as well and the ladders. You can see there in the bottom. And then the walkway, I painted it with silver paint first, just to bring out the tread. And then while the camera picks it up and then weathered it. And the same with the, the uh, fencing that goes around it as well. I kept the bottom gray just to keep the, you know, the difference in um, color, just to emphasize the sort of gas hole that should go up and down. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that's, that looks pretty effective. I'll just zoom back a bit. So I think that's going to look good on the layout. Um, so yeah, all in all. It's taken uh, a few evenings of uh, late nights to get it done, but pleased with it. So we'll see how it looks on the layout. 
So I also wanted to add some oil tanks to this industrial area, to uh, the gas works. Um, the actual company is called Jersey Oil and Gas, so I thought I'd uh, be good to have some oil um, tanks there. So I had a look around to see what's available and I ended up choosing these Nightwing um, oil tank, I think it's called an oil depot, uh, a little photo in there of it. Um, fairly easy to put together, just again gluing the, the cylinders together to make the tank. Hardest thing was the handrails and the stairs, and I actually managed to break one handrail, so I couldn't actually get that on. But other than that, it was fairly simple to put together and uh, and then paint. Good morning, everyone. It's a lovely day. Got my uh, cup of tea. Just thought I'd head down to the uh, railway room. And I'll just turn the camera on. You can see where it is situated. So yeah, it's a uh, garden. My garden room is at the end of the garden, as you'd expect. Got this nice footpath built down to it and I'll show you we've built this uh, nice pond here as well so it's quite a nice little setting now we've got here um, the actual room is made from concrete block it looks wooden but we just clad the outside and just put my coffee down um, and this side we've got the sort of sitting room area and then let's put the lights on that's the bridge that I can drop, but I don't that often, to be honest. And then this is the actual railway room, which is looking a bit of a mess. So today's job is to tidy it all up and then I can get on with the industrial area itself. So the posting's been today and I've got a nice uh, box of bits and um, arrived. To support the uh, industrial area. So I'll get ahead of myself and get some bits I can actually put around it. Um, so yeah, bought a little oil tanker uh, to fit on the, the oil depot works. And a series of 1980s cars, that's British Rail Land Rover. And an Escort there, white Escort Mark II. A Golf GTI. And an XR3i Escort. So, uh, a lot of my favourite cars when I was a teenager. I couldn't afford any of them, but they'll be parked in the gas works, I think. And then I've got, um, as you can see, it's coming. I've got a, uh, a little sort of workers' porter cabin that's going to go by the oil area. Some oil drums, uh, some pallets, and uh, IBCs. Another car there. Oh, I couldn't resist this one. It's a gas transit. And then I've got some relay boxes that I want to put on. I'm going to go near the third and fourth rails. Some cabling. And just some bonded tanks. So yeah, lots of bits for the industrial area. Skips. And and then I thought I'd try one of these out. I've seen them on uh, YouTube, but uh, it's the Train Tech uh, sound module for DC, because half my track's DC and half DCC. And I'm not still not sure if I'm gonna completely convert to DCC and sound. I do like the sound, but it's expensive, and I've got a lot of old low, low coast Lima and uh, Hornby and that, so I thought I'd get one of these and see what that's like to add a bit of um, sound effect to it. So I think it's based on the Class 31 uh, diesel, so. Be interesting to see. So I'll get some shots of that when it's all set up and running. So yeah, lots of bits to keep me busy with. Um, so quite excited to get on with the industrial area now and uh, get them in and dress the whole area. So uh, I'll uh, speak to you soon. Okay, so I'll give you a quick update. A uh, bit of a productive day today, just sort of setting out this area now. So as you can see, starting over this side, um, I've continued the footpath for the paving um, from the crossing down to the corner here now uh, and I put a bit of a grass bank a few flowers and bushes and that as well along there uh, I've continued the roadway round as well and edged this with just some greenery and that's to finish it off nicely then in here where the Batman building's going to go um, I wasn't quite sure what to do so I thought I'd just put like a foundation pad down and edge it with paving slabs and then where you've got the double slab here is going to be where the doorway is. So we'll just sit on there nicely and, and won't look a bit odd just sitting in the grass. Got a few more uh, of my 80s favourite cars there. 
Um, and yeah, and then I've used the um, flat roof felting, sort of upside down again, to do the parking area in the road. Uh, and I normally give it a bit of a black wash to sort of make it slightly darker, but I've decided to leave the parking area as it is, because it looks a bit more rough and ready, like an old car park would. A few cracks and creases and that in it. And I've done some markings, I don't know why they're coming out on the camera, but there's some chalk markings for the parking and that. Then over where the gas hole is going to go, I've just put some, I had some fine ballast and uh, greenery just around to edge it. It's got quite a thick plastic base, octagonal as you can see base. So I didn't want it just to, it'll look odd if I don't try and blend it in a bit. Um, but I want it to be removable. So, um, so yeah, so I've just done that and glued that in. I'm just waiting for that to dry and I've done a few walkways here that were left over from the from the gas holder so a few ways that will lead to it as well and the fence is all in and I've grassed and gravelled around that and then just up here I put a well you can see it a barrier a stop sign on it and that will lead through to the actual gas works there which you can see I've got a few tanks in place um, where the white card is where my port cabin office is going to go and this is going to be a loading the gantry area there as well. So yeah, it's uh, all starting to come together now. Let's go down a bit lower and about see it. So once I get all the buildings in place and finish off that area, um, I think it will look pretty effective. So I just thought I'd give you a quick update. I didn't really film any of it because I thought it would be a bit boring to watch really because it's pretty um, run of the mill stuff, but um, hopefully you, you can see how I've done it and uh, I'll give you an update when uh, I've got some buildings that to put in place. So I'll quickly show you how I do my concrete. Uh, I've seen uh, some of the more experienced YouTubers, uh, railway modellers that uh, do some really sophisticated ways of modelling their concrete. I'm keeping mine pretty simple to be honest. Um, all I've done is I've taken some card that I've just bought from my local stationery shop. Um, see there, it's not that thick. Don't know, a couple of mil. Uh, and then I've cut it into a bit of a jigsaw just as if that it was cast. Um, in these different slabs um, and made it all fit in hopefully quite nicely and then I've just gouged out and you can see there some of the corners just to put some some sort of cracks I guess they would be coming in from the edges and the corners where the stress points are so I've just done that to give it a bit of um, yeah make it a bit of a feature and you know, make it look a bit weathered and then uh, if I show you my mixing I've just got a grey Tester pot um, that I got from BQ, and then I'm adding a bit of um, a bit of brown, a bit of brown paint in there because um, concrete's generally more of a buff than complete grey colour. Uh, and then the other thing I discovered when I was doing the chapel station area is this uh, coarse texture gel, um, which is just uh, for use of acrylic paint. I'm not sure if it's white or if it's clear, but anyway, uh, it, it's just good. It's a bit, it's a bit grainy, so it just gives it a slightly textured finish. The paint. I was just lucky that my wife happened to have that in a paint box of uh, bits. She does a lot of arts and crafts, so um, I uh, borrowed it. But yeah, that just gives it a bit of texture. So when you paint it on, um, it gives it quite a nice finish, and then you can then weather on top of that as well. So um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to get the right colour. I'll start painting on and uh, I'll capture a few bits of video of it and uh, see, show you the end result. Okay, so I thought you'd like to see it glued down now. Um, just glued it down and just gave it a little touch up with a bit of the original paint just to um, blend in the joints because they're almost too obvious. But as you can see, it's sort of um, got the desired effect. I think it looks a bit like concrete that's a bit weathered and a bit dirted. 
I may even put a bit more weather in once I put the tanks on because uh, these tanks are going on here so obviously below there it's going to be a lot muckier than that so I'll do that when they're in position um, and the same with the tank over here and I may even put a bund around this one as well and then this is going to be a unloading area for the lorries so again I may actually dirty this more as well but I mean, this gives me the basic look so I'm pleased with that um, and then I can build on that once I'm starting to actually locate the stuff but I uh, hope you like it and um, hope you take something from it and maybe give it a go yourself so I'll carry on now add the buildings and uh, show you what it looks like when it's all uh, coming together okay so everything's dried and I started to just put some of the buildings in place see how they fit and what they look like and it's starting to take shape nicely. So I've got the gas holder there now. And I've just placed the office block in as well. And the fence in. And I've made a barrier, scratch built a barrier there as well, you can see. Just so the cars can't actually crash into the gas holder. Uh, fence going all the way around, all the grass is down and I've got a light. I've got a lamp, street lamp left over. I've got a few of them left over so I can put them in as well. So yeah, really pleased with that. It's starting to take, take shape nicely. Um, I think the next stage now is just to finish all the buildings off, get them on the layout, and then start adding all the extra little bits, uh, which is all the fun bit. Oh, like all this model making, there's a lot of work in the preparation, uh, but the fun bit is the end bit. It's a bit like decorating your house. All the prep is the boring bit, but the fun bit is actually the finishing touches. So looking forward to doing that in the uh, next part of this, uh, this building my industrial area, area part. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up um, and subscribe if you want to see uh, more, of, uh, more of my building attempts. Thanks very much. Take care and I'll speak to you again soon.